Thank you for being here today. I'm going to be doing some product testing with these sealants. I've done a few videos a while back, years ago, about how sealants do not work with sheet membranes, but I think I figured something out. I have a hypothesis that certain sealants work better than Curdy Fix at sealing sheet membranes like this RSS membrane or Curdy membrane. Doesn't matter, they all seem to work about the same. But the sealants do not. If you recall, I made a video about Curdy Fix leaking that you cannot just use it to seal up sheet membrane, it will leak. I'll put that video link down in the description. It's pretty cool because it's such an old video. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be taking a piece of sheet membrane, putting a piece of cardboard inside, putting sealant all the way around, putting another piece of sealant on it, sealing it up and putting it immediately underwater. The neat thing about these MS polymer sealants, it is, the MS stands for Modified Silane Polymer Sealants. They cure with the humidity that is in the air and they can be applied to wet surfaces. Since they cure with humidity, you can put the sealant directly underwater as soon as you apply it, and it will cure. You can also, you can also apply these sealants to wet surfaces like wet thin set mortar. It seems to bond really well to wet thin set mortar as well. I've done some other testing on it, and there'll be more to come on that. But this is a cool one here, so let's get started. So I'm gonna be starting with uh, the good old Curdy Fix here. This is uh, the white version. Just place the cardboard about in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and apply my bead. This is a great little trowel for spreading small areas of the. Well, what I'm going to do here is my pen. How do I replace? I, I misplace my pen more than anything, I think any other tool that I have. I either put it, oh, yep, there it is. It's right there, just sticking right in my pocket. What I'm gonna do is just trace this so I don't get it on the cardboard. And I'm going for uh, about a two inch overlap on this stuff. The Curdy Fix out of uh, the other sealants is more viscous, meaning it has more body to it. And I'm gonna do another Curdy Fix right after this. And I'm gonna do two of these Curdy Fix ones just so, uh, just because I wanna do two, just to, just to make sure. See, I'm really, really burning this sealant into the membrane itself. So I get a good mechanical bond down through the fleece. You might be asking why I am doing this. Well, this is the way they do it in Europe. This is their code. They cannot use thin set to bond sheet membranes together. So there's my cardboard. So the cardboard's going right in the middle. 
And now the, the cover sheet is going to go right over it. And I'm going to embed that top sheet really well into the bottom sheet, into the sealant. I'm doing my best here to really, really get full coverage underneath the membranes without making too much of a mess. So there is sample one, top sheet, piece of cardboard underneath, got it labeled, Curdy Fix, and this will go in the bucket of the water here shortly. Uh, when working with sealants, these little wipes are really helpful. I just picked these up at the paint section at the Home Depot. Almost lost my pen again. Okay, so curdy fix. Oh, this is gonna get messy. This is gonna be messy. That's all right. It's okay. I'm gonna take this one. Same thing. Put it in the middle of the sheet. Do another curdy fix. Probably need some more, more pookie in here. Again, I'm doing two of these because I just want to make sure because if one leaks, I want to be able to say, hey, I did two of them. It's not a fluke. And I kind of got to pretend like I've never done this before. I actually have done these experiments. So this is a way of maybe validating my results even though I've done it. I'm, I'm really certain of my results. And I didn't film it so I could share it with you guys. I didn't know if this was a good thing to share or not. Because I'm uh, currently uh, trying to help some other companies uh, develop a better way of waterproofing. So I got this extra. What am I going to do with it? I got to do something with it. How about a piece of cardboard? Perfect. And this Curdy Fix is expensive too. Wow, this Curdy Fix is uh, almost $30 uh, retail price per tube. And this other one that I've been using with good results, you pick up at Home Depot, it's the Rapid Set. Modified Silane, non-sag. That guy is like eight bucks a tube. So, not sure what you're paying for with the Curdy Fix, but anyways. Okay, good uh, mechanical bond here with the trowel. I'm gonna put our piece of cardboard in and Top sheet it says Curdy Fix and today's date. Can put it right in the middle, best of my ability. And see, again, I want you to make note that I'm really given some firm pressure to get good coverage 
Collapse those ridges of the V-notch. That's really firm pressure, which is important with these systems. I'm gonna clean up the edge. Okay. Curdy fix number two is done, ready to go in the water. Set that aside. So I got Curdy fix on here. I need to clean up, clean up my tools a little bit. Again, these wipes are really handy dandy. Acetone or mineral spirits paint thinner will work too, but they're harsh. These guys even smell good, so. Anytime you're using sealant for wall boards or whatever, it just seems to get everywhere. Okay. Okay, got that good. Let's see. Uh, now time for my next next one is going to be I got a little curdy fix on this one so I'm just gonna flip it over use the good side this next one is going to be the rapid set non sag this tubes a little different it doesn't come with a separate applicator nozzle and it has a foil cap that you need to break the curdy fix uh, nozzles are nice that you can just put them right back on and reuse them Maybe that's what the, the thirty dollars, the extra. Maybe that's what the extra twenty dollars you're paying for right there. Cause yeah, these guys are a little bit of a drag. You got to use the little poker and break that foil. But I always have you know these guys around. Clean these because if you don't clean that, it's going to get on your hands and get everywhere. Put this guy in the middle. That looks about in the middle. Trace the outline. Now rapid set. I think I got the gray variety for this one. Yes. So this one is less viscous. This, this one is actually really similar to the RSS sealant that I use, and I would be using that right now. I have tested it before, and it performed the same. And I think it has to do with the lower viscosity, the more lo loose it is, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so it, for one, it's, it's much easier to spread in the curdy fix like right off the bat this stuff is much nicer to spread it just kind of wants to go down right away so I'll do the same procedure give myself a really good mechanical bond into the fleece or burning it in, like we like to say. Okay, piece of cardboard going in the rapid set. Make sure I got it labeled correctly. A rapid set with today's date. Put it on over the middle. This is this isn't quite a two inch overlap. It's like a. I don't know, inch and three quarters, but good enough. And the 
rapid set is ready for the water. Once again, I'll clean these tools and we'll get to the next sealant. The last one is this private label company that I'm just trying out as a sample. This is the first time I've used it, so just doing some testing. Ooh, this is a black one. Interesting. Okay, now the black one. Oh, this one's really loose. I don't know if this would... This will, this will be interesting. This is like, this is the lowest viscosity out of all the ones that I tried. Okay, so the black, low viscosity. Look how e easy this one spreads. Oh. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Look at this, I just, just got it all over my phone. Ugh. Okay, I got my handy dandy wipes. Yeah, it's gonna be a mess. Yeah, the low viscosity stuff is like, uh, I could see it being really messy. Let's see. Yeah, good as new. Okay. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't really know why I'm doing this one because I don't think this would be applicable in what we do. Maybe it would. I just don't know if the sheet membranes would, uh, you know, stick together when you're applying them. But maybe it would. Piece of cardboard's gonna go in. This one with the uh, name date on it. Yeah. yeah, see, it's hard to even get the extra off of it without it just gooping everywhere. See, I wanted to try the, the really low really low viscosity ones just because I wanted it to apply like thin set not be so hard like the the curdy fix but this is just too low I don't think this would work uh, but the nice thing about this private label company they basically have all different viscosities different cure rates all the properties, colors that you would want. So if we did want to private label our own sealant, uh, we, we just adjust to the characteristics that we want. Okay, so I got my four samples soaking in the bucket of water. Again, the sealant's still wet. As soon as I applied the sealant, I put them into the bucket of water. So let's give them a week and let's see how they do, but take a look. Yeah, there's our, our four samples. We got the black one on top, two curdy fixes, and a rapid set. So those guys are just sitting. Yeah, the interesting thing about this sealant is just by adding water, it speeds up the, the process of the curing. So they're not even smearing anymore uh, from the water. So let's see how they do. We'll see you in a week, guys. Welcome back. It is Friday, March 17th. 
And we are ready to take our samples out of the water. Again, they've been soaking since last Friday and we'll see how the sealant's held up. And there's our rapid set. There is our black one. And then here is our two curdy fixes. Okay, which one should we start with first? I'm going to start with the ones closest to me. This is a curdy fix. And these, these two are exactly the same. But let's see what happens. Let's do the curdy fix. Good bond right off the bat. You can tell that it is until it's peeling off all of the fleece and just the plastic of the membrane is left. But our cardboard is all wet inside. I'm turn the exposure down. Maybe this will help a little bit. But you can see I got good coverage on everything. There's no voids in that and everything is completely leaked through. This is consistent with my previous testing I've done, so not a surprise to me, but it probably is to you to know that Curdy Fix does not create a seal between two layers, two layers of sheet membrane. And just to make sure that that sample was not a fluke, I did two, and I expect this one to be the exact same. And it is good coverage, really good coverage in there. And the paper got wet, soaked all the way through. Okay, so that was the Curdy fix. Now let's try this black one. I, I'm not expecting good things from this because it was not, did not have high enough viscosity. It was such a runny sealant that it wasn't even creating a good seal. Oh, but check this out. Wow. We are bone dry in the middle. So the sab attack, even though, let's see. So this black one, this private label one, see how well it bonded, completely peeled the fleece off and we are bone dry in the middle. Let's see if I can. Yeah, well, anyways, cardboard's completely dry. That one worked. Now we're doing the rapid set, which is this one. So let's see how this one did. Completely bone dry. Bone dry. And the sealant, that's, that's the other thing. So that's the other thing to note here is that the sealant cured up fully under bands of sheet membrane immediately underwater. Again, these were placed directly after I put the sealant, put this on top, these were immediately put in the water and they've been sitting for over seven days. So this is really cool for whatever it's worth, you know. So you know for years now, I mean probably four or five years I've been doing these testings with the sheet membranes. In the early days it was just curdy because that's what everybody knew and used. And I've been on a quest to create a system that is fully waterproof, that does not rely on thinset to bond the seams of the sheet membrane. And I've come up with some remedies, you know, putting uh, topical liquid waterproofing over, you know, a thinsetted seam system. But I've been trying to figure out a way to do these systems 
where they don't rely on thin set that you have a completely waterproof adhesive and my early testing with curdy fix because again that was one of the only things i did and I, i'll ref all in all these videos and testing that i'm referring to i'll try to put as many useful links to those videos down in the description so you can check them out but yeah all, all my early testing was done with the curdy fix which leaked so i was convinced that you could not use a sealant to bond the sheet membrane together but what it is there's just something with the chemical makeup of the curdy fix that uh, allows water to pass between it and the sheet membrane so i was convinced that none of them worked but i've been doing more playing around and testing and i'm really stoked to find out that i can do this so well, I don't know if this is useful information to you. I hope it is. It's uh, pretty eye-opening information to me, at least to be able to do it in a controlled test to verify to make sure it works. Uh, this, is, this is pretty cool stuff. This might really uh, change the game on how we, we do these systems. The other unique part of it is, is that uh, when you're using the sealants and they can be immediately put under water and in fact they actually do better when they're immediately put under water this would allow you to do your sheet membrane system and water test it immediately instead of like with schluter curdy thin setted systems you would have to do the system wait 24 hours then flood test you're losing a whole day uh, also i've done testing and i'll do further testing just to prove it but the way that thin set interacts with the uncured wet sealant is is very good you get a very good bond when you put thin set wet thin set onto the wet sealant uh, the next day when it's cured every every little test that i've done it bonds really well so these sealants actually bond to wet surfaces better than they do to dry surfaces really unique stuff so doing tests like this uh, allows me to take the next step once now that I have verified that I have built a full module here a mock-up of a shower pan uh, doing sealant for the bands and corners in a real application well this isn't real but it's a, a mock-up of a real situation with bands corners sheet membrane everything and this is soaking underwater so I'll be testing this Make sure you're subscribed, have your notifications on so you can see the results of this test too. But I think this is kind of just the beginning, guys. I think we're, we're on to something here. And uh, it's exciting. It's awesome. I hope you are encouraged to maybe try new things, think outside the box. If you see an area in this world that you think could be improved upon, uh, don't be afraid to just try new things, uh, experiment, uh, reason things out. So anyways, I hope that encourages you. I think the world needs more free thinkers, more people who are willing to uh, use common sense and deductive reasoning. Uh, in the scientific world especially, I think our scientific world is really controlled way too much by money and influence and power that it's not really science anymore. It's basically just a marketing campaign for some agency that has other interests in mind. So I was thinking of a, a saying that's been used a lot over the last few years, uh, follow the science, but it's almost like uh, follow the money instead. <laughs> and you can see how all these uh, conclusions and scientific data are coming about. Uh, when um, the people who are doing the testing have a huge financial gain for a certain outcome, you got to question that outcome. So anyways, I love you guys. I love being your tile coach, and we'll see you on the next video.